to pull into Fonte Flora. Here's our driver. Gum out right here. Hmm. I'm gonna throw my gum out right there. Phil wants to spit his gum out. I think I see a ghost. <laughs> Hide behind the bushes. That's pretty cool. Fonte Flora Plantation. So, I mean, guys, how can I help you? I mean, what, what do y'all need from me? Well, I guess you just want to give us a rundown of the history. Yeah. On the background. The house was built in 1808, and that's according to my grandparents. As he's, you'll see different dates on the internet, but 1836 is when we were hit by a tornado. Uh, the house originally was built by Dr. George Butler Pearson. He married Elizabeth Austin. The Austins were like the first family of Fairfield County. Oh, wow. So when they got married, her dowry was this property. And back then it was about 3,000 acres. Like I said, we had about a little over 5,000 acres. Mm -hmm. We had a lot more up until 1927. 1927, my great grandfather, I guess, was a lot of the local land guys. He lost 1,500 acres in a poker game. <laughs> he, he, went back, he, he went back to win it the next night and gave him 300 more. What was the uh, what was the house's history during the Civil War? Uh, during the Civil War, all the able-bodied men were fighting. Of course, the women were in Alexandria, Virginia, at a sister plantation uh, because it was more neutral. So the only people here were the servants and an elder, elderly gentleman that was too old to fight. But a division of Sherman's army under General Kilpatrick came and camped out, and they killed the livestock, ate off the fine china. You know, to this day, you can still find pieces of the china in the pastures. I mean, because they would basically eat, take it, and break it. And before they left, the last thing they did was set the house on fire. And it started in the parlor, the room with, with all the books. And behind the one bookshelf, the wall is, is still charred. So, but as they were leaving, the servants came out and uh, put the fire out. And so it was still standing when the men came home from the war. And you found evidence of Native American history here before that? Uh, don't know the exact tribe. I probably should research it. But yeah, arrowheads, anytime I disc one of our food plots or my pasture, depending on after a heavy rain, they just come to the top. I mean, and they're prevalent. And I mean, as a matter of fact, I found three yesterday. What, uh, when and what was the first uh, incident of paranormal activity that your family reported? My, the earliest one would be my grandmother that, I, that I'm aware of. I'm sure there's some before that, but when my grandmother was a child, I would say anywhere between 8 and 10, she was sitting where we are now, and behind us are the English boxwoods. And those boxwoods originally came from Brook Green Gardens because the Austin family were affiliated with the Austins in Winsboro. So they had them all shipped up here. And these, these boxwoods, it used to be a maze. I mean, the, oh, all over here. Okay. Yeah. And that's where they buried the stillborns. And, and the, there used to be okay. markers in there. So about 20 years ago, somebody stole them. But her namesake, Emmeline, who's the painting in the dining room, they were sitting in a swing, and they swear that they, a, poof, a, a cloud came out of the box woods and came over here to the front porch where they were sitting and hovered over them. And Emmeline, the lady in the picture, went running in the house. It's poor Sister Katie. It's poor Sister Katie. <laughs> who was her sister that died as a child. Other than the stillborn children, who else passed away at this house? Uh, just basically all my ancestors. I just don't, you know, but I don't know the dates. But in 1941, my great-grandfather, George Butler the third, George Butler Pearson, he passed away in the downstairs bedroom. This is where... My, gr my great grandmother died in it. Her husband died. In it. Her, my great grandfather died in 1941 uh, in his sleep. 1957, my grandmother called my, my my great grandmother called my grandmother and told her that she had a stomach ache. And my grandmother told my granddad, "So we've got to go. We call it the country. So we've got to go to the country. Mama's dying." And he's like, "No, she has a stomach ache. She'll be fine." Well, they got here and there was a note on that table, and she called my grandmother fair. Said fair, meet you at the gates. Inside you with Danny. Oh, wow. Yeah, in that bed. So. Wow. <laughs> what was her name? Uh, Lily Bell Highland. You got Lily, Lily, Lily Bell Highland. My grandfather was getting the house ready for winter. Uh, we used to use, use baseboard heaters. And he had gone up to the attic and got down here and had a massive stroke and died. Oh, wow. I mean, right here. I mean, at the 
carrying the two baseboard heaters. So those are the three most, three, there's countless others. I mean, so many people, you know, but his name was George Tomlin. George Tomlin. Yeah, yeah, so Granddaddy died right here in October 18th, 1989. Wow. And in 2000, well, in the other house, the little house, uh, my uncle passed away in 2005 in the bedroom that, uh, that I showed to you earlier. But, I mean, there's numerous more. I just don't know the Pacifics, I mean, of the dates and when. But, you know, in my generation, yeah, that's four. So. Do you feel like your family has had a pretty strong spiritual and intuitive connection? When you Obviously. I mean, through I mean, my grandmother especially. You know, I think she gifted that to all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we all believe that there are spirits here. But I mean, with me personally, I mean, I, I think they're, they're kind-hearted and, and they're, they're good. I mean, I really feel like they're our ancestors, and they're just, you know, they're just here watching out, they, watching out for us. Okay. You know, over the years, in a more recent generation, uh, my eldest brother and his daughter were in, here one night and staying in the big house downstairs bedroom, and it sounded like someone was dragging chains across this, above them on the second floor, and you know, my brother didn't say anything to my niece, but my niece looked over and said, "Daddy." Did you hear that too? Well, my all story short, my brother left. I mean, he was he went to a hotel. I mean, it wasn't that he was freaked out or scared, but he just wanted to get some sleep because it, it was so loud. And in that same room, uh, one of my friends that was here about four years ago, we were just during deer season. He swears somebody was running their fingers through his hair. Wow. I mean, and he was, and his wife is real spiritual. I mean, and connected to the paranormal, and she's been here on many occasions and just swears that she feels things. My grandmother died in 1989, but Pete Ameth and his wife, they moved in in 91 and stayed till 97 as the caretakers for us, who just have a presence. And on multiple occasions, I say multiple, a few, they are convinced they heard violins being played in the attic, and Mr. Ameth would go up to the top and it would stop, and as soon as he would get back downstairs, they would start back up again. So I don't know the exact dates, but anywhere between that 91 and 1997 while they're here, it happened three times. Right. And they have a daughter who at the time was 42 that came from Texas to visit. And she had freaky things happen to her, like doors being pulled out of her hand, like, you know, while she was trying to open or shut, things moving around that just didn't make any sense. And she never would come back. Uh, she, she was so freaked out about the occurrence that she had experienced. So she visited once and told her parents they lived in, in a haunted house and, and never came back. Okay. Now, um, your family were sl slave owners before the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, what happened to uh, the, the slaves? The, the majority of them stayed. I mean, cause Sonic, and, and when you think of the word plantation, I mean, we didn't, there weren't that many. There were some, but they were but more basically house slaves. I mean, cooks, people that, you know, tended to the fires. Uh, there were a few that, you know, would it help with the land, I mean, but we, we did grow some cotton, but it never was that big of a cotton plantation. Mm -hmm. So the number of slaves were, were few. And my my great-great, the one downstairs, he wrote a letter to one of our relatives that he was worried about uh, his Negro friends and their use of tobacco. I mean, you know, he treated them like family, but he you know, wrote yeah. down that he was worried about their use of tobacco. Well, so the majority of them stayed. I mean, that my grandfather, I mean, my ancestors built them houses throughout the property, and most most of them stayed. And then a few of their children were here, uh, you know, up until really, my oldest brother Ada uh, helped raise my brother when he was a child. I mean, I think Ada probably lived till Kent was five, so she was up in here until about forty five years ago. And I Ada mean, was the last. Of yeah, the she was the last that I'm aware of. You know, she's the one that lived on the back of the property, and had, you know, she got. Busted by the revenuers in the 20s for having a steal. I mean, but you know, but she would roam these woods at night, and she was, you know, maybe a little bit into the voodoo, witchcraft, and something or medicine woman. Okay. You know, and, and there's things from passed down from her generation. So it wasn't uncommon to see her wandering. No, the woods I mean, I mean, they said that she could. I mean, the pitch of night with her eyes closed, she could walk this property anywhere. Well, you mentioned some theft of the gravestones in the past. Yeah. So how? I mean, how often is that a problem that you've got? It, it really with? hadn't been. I mean, you would be amazed. We know most of the folks around here, and you know, they. They know us. Uh, all the years that has been here, I don't think that. Of course, there's never been a break in, mm -hmm. you know. And we do have a security system. We won't put that. Yeah, on don't put that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the security system. The code is. 
Yeah. yeah. Editing capability. You, you want to say right now we have yeah. a we have a, a yeah. pack of yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's one two, a, it's one, two, <laughs> one, two, three, four. Shot, there are shotguns in every room. Yeah. yeah. Well, well that is true. I mean, they're not loaded. They better, they better not be. But yeah, we leave a lot. We leave a lot. That's the security system. The guns.